Welcome to the T. Allen Haynes Radio Show. Conversations with elite business leaders from around the world. And now, here is your host, T. Allen Haynes. Welcome back to the show for this special edition of Cryptocurrency and Blockchain Innovators. Today, we've got a great guest. His name is Keith Agoida, and he is the CEO of Producers Market. And he has worked in the supply side of the agricultural industry for the past decade. And initially, as founder of commercial urban agricultural firm called Sky Vegetables. And over the last four years, he's been involved in international procurement development in roles for UNFI, Global Organics, and Veg Fresh Farms. And Keith speaks four languages, English, Spanish, farmer, and buyer. He also maintains on-the-ground relationships with leading growers and packers in Mexico, Costa Rica, Colombia, Panama, Argentina, Nicaragua, Bolivia, and Peru. Keith's passion for supporting producers is the inspiration for the producer's market. Keith, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. We're so excited to have you today and the information that you're going to share with the audience. So let's just get right into it. Tell us a little bit about your business and the solution that you're providing to your clients and customers. Excellent. Well, uh, I am a co-founder of Producers Token. It's a cryptocurrency venture that we're starting, and it is a venture that we're building in order to support producers around the world. And we define producers as an individual group or business that grows, processes, or packs organic or conventional products on the agriculture value chain. It's one of the oldest and largest industries in the world. There's more than 500 million producers supplying more than 7 billion people every day, totaling more than $8 trillion of transactions every year. And uh, although the producers create the physical value in this supply chain, it is the intermediaries that tend to dominate the system, the wholesalers, exporters, importers, distributors, brokers, and retailers. And we're not saying let's just eliminate these groups, but what we are saying is that with blockchain technology and other digital technologies that uh, provide decentralization, uh, the agriculture value chain will be evolving. And in this evolution, there will be more direct financing, direct marketing opportunities for producers, and ultimately a shift in power where these intermediaries may provide more of a cost plus type of role as opposed to a profit dominator. And, you know, just a couple of stats for you that we found to be very uh, compelling are that around only 8.5% of every dollar spent by the consumer on food ends up with the farmer. And the FAO uh, estimates that of all food production from source to consumer, about 40% is wasted. So uh, we have an extremely archaic and uh, system that is ripe for some improvements. And we believe with, uh, you know, the digital technology and smartphone information technology wave that came in that provided a strong base of new communications and new tools. And now with this new blockchain, smart contract, cryptocurrency movement, we believe that there's just going to be a full on, uh, you know, makeover of our agriculture value chain system. That's awesome. I mean, you hit the, you hit it right on the head, archaic system. So yeah, that's going to be a breath of fresh air for that industry. What led you to this? I mean, how did you, how did you get started in this business? Great. Well, um, most of our team actually comes from the agriculture value chain industry at different parts. Personally, I started a company called Sky Vegetables about 10 years ago that uh, is a rooftop greenhouse hydroponic business. And Ah. I started that at university and ended up getting uh, funding and and sold the majority of my ownership stake. And in that experience, uh, we were working to create more direct value chains to connect consumers 
more directly to the source of production. And over the years, I've collaborated and partnered with other people in the industry who share that same vision and motive. And uh, about two years ago, we found that digital technology was the solution to creating this shift in traceability, the shift in consumers being more integrated directly with producers. And so we started building a, a digital platform without thinking about cryptocurrency or your blockchain, just to make a connections for producers to a uh, global market of buyers. And somewhere in this journey, uh, we started looking at smart contracts. And it wasn't from a speculation, hey, let's get uh, a lot of capital and make a bunch of money quickly, but really uh, from a uh, usage case of how can we use smart contracts to make a better industry. And um, in our industry, these uh, international sales, these sales between producers and buyers, they're oftentimes very informal. They're done on phone calls, on emails. There's miscommunications. There's sometimes deliberate miscommunication so that later on buyers can ask for discounts. There's late payments. There's payment terms that are just not fair, 30, 60, 90 days, when the person being paid has already sold the product and made their money, and now they're sitting on the farmer's cash. And so there's these systemic and structural issues that we found could be solved with smart contracts. And so we got into this specific cryptocurrency space looking at smart contracts. And uh, as we got further in, that was around the time when Ethereum started taking off in this concept of uh, incentivized platforms where you can actually start to reward or include your actual industry members in the ownership of the platform itself. And that's where we got this, uh, you know, big light bulb moment where uh, we saw a future that producers, the farmers, the processors, the packers, the people creating the physical value, taking the true risk on the value chain should own the supply chain. So they should participate as a quote unquote broker, as a distributor, as a e-commerce retailer, as a retailer, and start to um, create a model of business where the people taking the risk, adding the most value, could actually participate upstream of their production. That is excellent. Along the way, I mean, you must have had some people that inspired you. Is there anyone that stands out? Uh, definitely. Uh, I would say there's a, a farmer we work with. He's an organic avocado farmer in Mexico. He's a pioneer. He started over 20 years ago in organic and everyone in his family told him he's crazy. He's got 10 brothers and sisters and his mom who all have avocado farms. And uh, I met Lionel a few years ago because he was sick and tired of having to sell his avocados that he puts so much uh, love into. He pays his workers properly. He takes care of his environment properly. And there he is selling his avocados to these massive uh, brands, these massive brokers, because he doesn't speak English well. He doesn't understand how to sell his avocados internationally. But he had this entrepreneurial drive that nothing could stop him to get his avocados sold directly to retailers and start to interact directly with consumers in the United States. And so we worked with Lionel over the last few years to actually get his uh, avocados placed directly uh, to Whole Foods, selling the avocados direct to Whole Foods, and actually getting them in the store and having Lionel come into the store, make guacamole, you know, actually brought a mariachi band one time and interact with consumers. And this moment of, of true inspiration was, when you see the faces of these uh, consumers who are buying their organic avocados in California and got to meet the man who actually owns the farm and grows the avocados and to see how enthusiastic people were, you know, people in Los Angeles who are around celebrities all the time and, and kind of don't really care. And here they are going nuts over meeting an avocado farmer. And so, um, you know, that experience with Lionel and his passion to, go direct to consumers or interact with consumers and how the consumers as well wanted that interaction, you know, that was a huge source of inspiration for us. 
Yes, that uh, reminds me of the old coffee commercials where they featured Juan who grows the coffee beans in the <laughs> in the mountains, and uh, you get to meet him and interact. That's cool with the avocados. I mean, what a better what a better product to do that with. Definitely, and and for us, um, this is our passion. You know, we've been into uh organics and agriculture supply chain for many years and there's nothing that makes us happier than to you know help Lionel and people like Lionel fulfill their dreams of doing more direct business and if we can share that platform with people like Lionel and we can call you know farmers our business partners and, and co-owners of our platform then you know for us it's a great blessing oh absolutely uh, i mean you read every day about the farmers are just giving up and some of them are even taking their own lives and they're just so thinking that it's the end. I mean, this is definitely a a great shot in the arm for them. So thanks for sharing that with us. And that's a great, great story. What about totally? What, what about a book? Is there any particular book that stands out? Wow. Um, you know, Michael Pollan, who's uh, an author based in Berkeley. Uh, he really opened my eyes around that 10 years ago, writing about the value chain and, and food culture and food information and understanding uh, different uh, systems of agriculture. And one book called uh, The Omnivore's Dilemma and also Botany of Desire. And on a more kind of business economics level, uh, around that same period of time for me, which was really influential, uh, I got to speak with an author called Paul Roberts, who wrote The End of Food. And he had written other books about the end of oil, I think. And he just has a, a macroeconomics perspective. And he laid out the entire kind of anthropological and also economic history of agriculture to the point where we are now in the enormous obstacles that we have as humanity to feed ourselves in the coming years. Excellent. So I, I can I can feel your passion and obviously you have to be passionate as an entrepreneur and believe in, in what you're doing, but what is it that really drives you and gets you up out of bed every morning to do what you do? Yeah. So, I mean, my lifestyle, um, for my work, I travel a lot. And um, for me, what's most important is that I'm eating amazing organic food every day. I really uh, center my life around eating amazing food. And so connecting to that is working with the people who are creating these types of products. And the the love and, and just how great I feel every day to eat my organic food. I want to share that with the world and I want to make organic more affordable. I want to open the markets up so that there's more production, there's more availability and, and, you know, underserved markets for organic and people, if they're going to pay a premium price for organic products, that premium should go to the farmer, not to a retailer who's, investors have nothing to do with anything besides owning stocks of the company. And so creating that um, connection with the food is, uh, for me, it's something I'm passionate about. And, and it's so much fun to be in this industry and to, you know, ha be able to, for my job, go and visit farms and meet with farmers is, for me, it's, it's my dream job. And of course, being an entrepreneur has lots of difficulties and things you have to deal with on the business side. But uh, the fact that every day myself and our, and my teammates were just working towards a cause of creating more organic supply and creating more direct connections for, for consumers to be served better. It's a really a, a fun, a fun industry to be in and a, a really good moment to be in that industry. Excellent. So we've touched on a little bit about some of the challenges and problems that the the market is experiencing. So is it is the technology, the blockchain and all is that what's making it better or is it I mean what what's the connection there with blockchain and 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 this niche? How is it making it better? Great. So I think the first thing to understand 
is what are producers demanding? When you go and uh, visit with farmers and you, and you hear what their pain points are, you know, what are they constantly saying? And for me, it, it narrows it down to they're demanding better prices. They want faster payments. They want greater consistency. They want access to more capital. And they want more transparency up the supply chain. And so we started looking at technologies like cryptocurrency, uh, where payments can be quicker with less transaction fees and peer-to-peer, looking at smart smart contracts, where the terms between the producer and their buyers can be very clear and on the blockchain and transparent. Um, Issues of traceability, where consumers want to truly know this is coming from Lionel Chavez's farm in Mexico. And so now with um, putting uh, the traceability and the logistics onto the blockchain for people to truly trace and follow with QR codes, um, with peer-to-peer, P2P financing opportunities where, uh, you know, again, the Lionel Chavez uh, avocado farmer example, where he's selling his $50,000 container of avocados today, but he's not going to get paid for 30 days. Well, there's people out there who can loan him or basically forward him part of that $50,000 at a lower interest rate than some of the quote unquote factoring uh, enterprises that are very abusive in their payment terms. Mm -hmm. Then there's technologies around uh, social media and digital funneling where you can start to uh, use digital tools like SEO, Google, Instagram, Facebook, and start to connect uh, the producers more directly with buyers, cutting out some of the levels of wholesalers, brokers, and such. And then there's the data analytics side. So after you're taking the smart contracts, all of that data information being collected and put into uh, decentralized databases, organizing market data, market information, understanding uh, which markets want which sizes at which prices during what time of the year, what are the prices in Mexico versus in South Africa versus in New Zealand for avocados, and having the information that can ultimately make the uh, business of being a farmer more profitable. And finally, uh, there's this concept of the smart value chain that we've been working on, which is analyzing all the different points of potential sales that a farmer can sell their output. Uh, going back to that FAO quote that around 40% of food is wasted. So you look at a smart value chain. Now, an avocado, you know, the, the middle size is called a size, let's say, uh, a 48 or 60. That's what the retailers want. And so you get into these really small sizes and, and the number two B grade sizes, and those are much harder to sell. So a lot of times they have to be sold at really low prices uh, to certain marketing channels. But if you have a a map, a digital map of all the different potential sales locations, then the producer can access higher value for their B grade and their off-sized fruit, which is really where their profits are made and lost. Because the really good quality stuff might only represent, you know, 40, 50, 60 percent. And when I say good quality, I mean the aesthetics of it, because the actual quality of these products are perfect. The the consumer and the supermarket has just been trained to only want something that looks perfect. But if you go off to your apple tree where you live and you look at all the apples on the tree, how many of them actually look like the perfect size, the perfect shape? There's no scars. There's no insect holes, stuff like that. So how do we find a home for 100% of the output? And you know, that model for us is like the entire buffalo approach that the Native Americans used, where every piece of the buffalo got used for something. So mm. for the avocado, you know, the the actual uh, seed can be dehydrated and turned into a powder. You know, the skin can be pressed out of oil for different properties. You can make guacamole, purees, frozen. You know, so you have all these channels that an avocado, as the example, can be used for. So let's not just focus on, two, focus on two sizes of a fresh product, but how do we get the most money from that whole avocado? Interesting. 
interesting. I, I was in the oil and gas business for a while, and one of the most profitable byproducts of the of the refining process is coke. And it's actually the last step of the process. And the refineries make most of their money off of that coke because they ship it overseas and they use it for energy overseas. And and it's the whole process type uh, that you're talking about that they use that. So that's very cool. Totally. And, and part of our inspiration for that was, uh, again, years ago, just being in the industry, I, I learned about chicken growers in the United States, you know, us uh, Americans, we don't like the feet and we don't like some of the inner parts, but you know, the Asians and the Russians do. So just yeah. finding a market that was worth $0 or even you have to pay to remove it and turning it into a profit center is one of the greatest opportunities. Absolutely. What about can you share with us? I know you talked about the avocado, the avocado farmer. Could you share with us another similar story where um, you've actually helped them overcome sure. uh, challenges? Yeah, we're in the process of uh, supporting a group in Costa Rica that's a uh, organic pineapple cooperative, mm -hmm. and uh, what we're working with them on is a project where we can actually prototype our tokenization platform. Uh, we have a product that we're coming out with on our, as part of our token called the Farm Token, which is an asset tokenization platform where we're going to take physical, agricultural, and natural resource assets and uh, basically tokenize them and make those tokens available to investors to financially support and be co-owners of agriculture value chain products. So on a, a similar note, the pineapples, uh, only a certain percentage of them are desired for fresh export markets, which is the premium market. And so the cooperative wants to take their B grade, maybe the ones that are too ripe or the ones that can't be shipped, and dehydrate them into dehydrated pineapple which has a 12-month shelf life and is uh, getting a really good price on wholesale and retail markets for dried fruit. So we want to connect consumer and investor interest who understands this type of business, who can connect uh, emotionally uh, to a group like a cooperative who's growing organic products and actually support them with a small investment or a large investment to buy digital tokens that would represent, uh, you know, ownership in that project. And in return, now the co-op has the funding they need in order to build this dehydration facility and get a much better price on a considerable percentage of their harvest. And so, you know, these are the types of farmers and projects that we're looking to support. And, you know, we've already uh, been working and, and negotiating with over 18 different very serious producers, uh, a group uh, in the Philippines that's a large coconut producer who doesn't want to stay up day to day understanding the digital world. They don't want to have to keep up with their blog every day and update their website every two to three years and figure out the SEO process. They just want to process and grow. They grow some of their coconuts, so grow process a lot, and then sell their coconut products around the world. But they'd love to work with a group that is focused every single day on the digital realm so that they can put all of their resources and energy into what they do best and rely on a third party that they also can be an owner of to actually go out there and uh, find the markets for their products. Beautiful. Well, you're truly innovating. And, uh that's awesome. So what would be the best piece of advice that you would give someone who is, you know, considering taking the, taking the path that you guys are taking or have to offer? What would be the best piece of advice you would give them? Wow, great question. I'd say the biggest piece of advice is to keep going. If you truly want to be an entrepreneur, and the second step is being a successful entrepreneur, 
get ready for a roller coaster ride and get ready for a major adventure every day and for having to face certain realities, personal, economic, that you never in a million years wanted to face or imagine facing, but it's going to come somewhere in your journey and just be ready for that. And if you really believe in what you're doing, then just keep going. Don't give up. Just keep moving forward. Pivot. You know, redefine yourself. Evolve. Do what you have to do, but don't give up. Because if you believe in what you're doing, you will find something that works. Excellent. As far as cryptocurrency and blockchain, I mean, is obviously there's skepticism in the marketplace about its effectiveness, but how do you feel about its long-term potential? Coming from a perspective of someone who is a huge skeptic, you know, just from my more, you know, background in business and looking at a coin called DentaCoin that's for dentists and it's worth all this money, I said, this whole thing's nonsense. It's all going to fail. Like, this is a Ponzi scheme. It's a joke. That was my initial reaction. But Mm. getting into this from a place of functionality and technology and researching many of the currencies from a perspective, not of a speculative investment, but because we want to actually integrate and use these platforms. Uh, For me, this is here to stay. And I'm convinced of it because the technology is incredible. Decentralization is the future of everything. And the fact that blockchain, cryptocurrency, smart contracts, that they're providing this new opportunity for decentralization and empowerment uh, is um, it's unstoppable. And so while there's going to be a lot of fraud, there's going to be a lot of people who are doing things for the wrong reasons, taking advantage of people. There's going to be poor teams that don't deserve the capital they have. And it's going to be squandered like in any, you know, new industry, all these things are going to happen and regulation is going to come down hard. People are going to be made examples of, All this is going to happen, but over time, you know, just like taxis are protesting the shared economy and hotels want to stop, you know, people from renting their house out to somebody, you know, eventually the truth is there. And when something is more innovative and makes for greater economic systems and empowers more people with more money, then it's only a matter of, matter of time given we live in a capitalistic world. And so, you know, in the true spirit of entrepreneurship and capitalism, it feels like the underlying technology behind blockchain, behind cryptocurrencies, behind smart contracts is revolutionary. And people are going to want to use it for the wrong reasons, but, you know, that happens in every industry. So, you know, uh, I guess one way to put it, I was with Jeffrey Tucker, who's an economist I I really uh, respect. And he said, you know, uh, and he understands history well. He was talking about how when the trains came out, you know, trains would crash and people would die. People were selling fraudulent stocks and train certificates. And all the media around it was like, trains are horrible. Trains are never going to work. And now we look Mm -hmm. at trains like, duh, it's a train. And I really believe that you know, the way we look at trains, the way we look at now the internet is how we're going to look at decentralized technologies like blockchain, smart contracts, and uh, cryptocurrency. Yes, it's innovative. And, and that was an excellent, excellent response to that question. And thank you for that. It's, uh, it goes back, I don't know if you're familiar that I'm a retired Navy veteran, and I saw a video of uh, airplanes landing on aircraft carriers in the early days. And You know, it was one crash after another and crash, crash, crash until they finally got it right. I mean, just think where we would not be if we hadn't gone through that. And people saying it's not going to work. You can't land a plane on a rocking aircraft carrier, yada, yada, yada. So absolutely. So here we are today with its routine. So, yeah, congratulations on being invited to the first inaugural crypto business forum at NASDAQ in New York. So congratulations on that. Thank you. It's an honor to be part of that event. Yeah, we're really excited uh, to have you being involved. So what 
or how can the listeners find out more about what you're doing and how you could possibly help them? Great. Well, in, in the coming weeks, we're going to be launching our token uh, website, which is producerstoken.com, and that will have all the information about basically the holding company, which is holding all of our entities across the value chain. And for those who want to play around a little bit with our uh, business-to-business uh, platform that we've already built in its uh, prototype stage, it's, it's up live. It's producersmarket.com. And so producersmarket.com, you can go on today and kind of see what we're building. And it's, it's definitely in its early stage, but get a feel with what we're doing. And then uh, very soon we'll have our producerstoken.com uh, website up where you can learn more about uh, the vision we have on the corporate level and, and what we aim to achieve. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. We're super excited to see you at the NASDAQ in, in a few days. And uh, thank you very much. Great. Well, thank you for having me. And it's, a, it's an honor to be a part of this. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the event. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Well, there you have it for this edition of the show. We'll see you the next time. Thanks for listening to the T. Allen Haynes Radio Show with T. Allen Haynes. Conversations with elite business leaders from around the world. We will see you next time on the T. Allen Haynes Radio Show.